Hello, my name is Mark Winterbottom. I'm a senior lecturer in science education at the Faculty of Education at the University of Cambridge. There's one big message when thinking about teaching A-level, and that is making it as demanding, as thought-provoking as your efforts to teach IGCSE. So what that doesn't mean is that you stand up a class and do a lot of talking, but actually what that does mean is you get students to do the thinking. So when you're trying to make them engage in a concept, Encourage that talk at the start of a lesson so that you've got interactive dialogue between you and the students, but then give them something which allows them to either work it out for themselves or to work through it for themselves. In this way, you're engaging with their prior knowledge, you're getting good exploratory talk happening, and you're getting them to learn. One other thing to think about, or one other way of thinking about it, is to employ the principles of assessment for learning. Now, Really, what they say is that you should see the learner as autonomous, and you should try to develop that autonomy. You should make the learners support each other by working in pairs or in groups. And you should give them feedback so that they know where they're starting from and where they're going to. So that involves clarifying your learning intentions at the start of lessons and getting students to reflect back on what they've learned at the end of lessons. It's no different to when you teach IGCSE. A-level is just the same. It requires you to engage your students in deep and um, an exploratory thought. If you get your students to think, then actually you're achieving one of the big aims of science education, and that's to develop real new scientists who can actually do science when they leave. So fostering their critical thinking, fostering their data analysis skills, fostering the way in which they interpret data and make sense of data as part of inquiries is really important. Don't be hijacked by the specification. Don't allow the content knowledge to rule your teaching. Really think about those key skills that they'll take forward into scientific careers. And actually, it's that kind of thinking that makes science lessons enjoyable at A-level or at IGCSE, and which will make them think, or make students think, that science is really for them. And that's what you're trying to achieve. One key part of teaching A-level science is practical work. Now, of course, Many of you might say that there's not enough equipment in your schools in order to do it, and that may well be true and is a real disadvantage. However, when you see the opportunity for practical work, really think if you could do it. There's a lot of kitchen chemistry experiments you can do. There's a lot of just normal resources which you can employ to achieve the same ends as practical work. But don't run to your head of department every five minutes to ask for new equipment, because they probably won't pay for it. So really think, what will students learn from practical work is it therefore worth doing? And if it is, really make that case for it and really go out of your way to try to, um, to try to get the equipment in any way you can. There's two key things that children get out of that practical work. One of them, if you ask the right questions alongside, is learning of conceptual ideas. The second is learning how to do. So how to do science, how to interpret data, how to think. Both of those are equally important. The other challenge that teachers often talk about is time. Specifications are often very full of content knowledge, but look in the specification because the application of understanding is just as big as the content knowledge itself. So really think properly about how you can prepare your students for the whole specification and that will diversify your teaching so that rather than you having to do everything, probably quite inefficiently, you get your students to do most of the work and that for homework in class and that will mean that they're more likely to learn what you want them to learn. What you may also find is that students and parents really see coming to school as a way of getting knowledge. In other words, they want to write down everything you say, they just want to sit and listen, they want to go home with good notes, and then um, the parents then look at the quality of your teaching based on the products that they see coming home. That can be quite difficult to educate students to realise that their responsibility is to do the thinking, to do the learning. So when you design activities for them to do, to try to get them to think through or think up the ideas you want them to, to come to, then actually the best way is to design them so that you can generate notes off the back of them so when they go home they know they've got things to revise from, but in the class they really did the learning by doing the thinking. Some of you may find that the students who arrive in your A-level class really don't have many practical skills. So I would suggest that at the start of the year, you really focus on developing those skills. Really think about the, what, what do they learn how to do in your practical activities. 
and structure your practical activities so that you've almost got a matrix which tells you what you think they're going to learn in terms of skills and competencies as well as what you think they're going to learn in terms of conceptual ideas. Some teachers I know even do a little um, two-lesson course on practical skills at the start of the year. That's not a bad idea, especially if you ask the students to write up their own little practical skills handbook which they can draw on throughout the year. But ultimately, really think about it because feeling unskilled for a student actually can be a barrier for their engagement in practical activities. And so making them feel confident is really important.